So guys, I've used this, the OnePlus 12R, for about 30 to 40 days now. And this might be the most value for money premium mid-range smartphone. Now, I've got seven reasons why I think this is a really good phone, but I do have a couple of reasons why you may not want to get this phone. Let's start with the good reasons first. Reason number one, this phone, it has the kind of performance that I don't think I've ever seen on any other smartphone in this price segment. Let me show it to you. So you know, I could be reading an email and then suddenly jump over to Slack, open a mockup and quickly download that, then go into gallery and check that image out and see if it's good. And maybe then hop over to WhatsApp and quickly send it to someone by accessing the gallery. Or just look at the speed with which I can shift between different camera modes on this phone versus the Galaxy S24 Ultra, which by the way, is the flagship of the year. I mean, this is easily the fastest, the smoothest, and it's really buttery, especially when you're moving across apps. And this kind of performance I've only seen in the OnePlus 12 and now on the OnePlus 12R. Like even if it's just a link that you click on to read an article or just loading of pictures on a wallpaper app, I mean, everything just flies. And guys, the reason behind this, and let me tell you this without getting too technical, is that OnePlus has developed something called as the Trinity engine for their OnePlus 12 series phones. It kind of achieves an insane level of sync between their internal storage, the RAM and the processor, which is why it acts this fast. Even if you enjoy occasional gaming, this is absolutely fantastic. I mean, games, they install fast, they load up quickly, and the gameplay is super smooth. Like, even 60 FPS frame rate, it just feels smoother than all phones in this segment, except the Ico Neo 9 Pro. Now guys, there's one very important difference between the OnePlus 12R and the flagship OnePlus 12. The OnePlus 12 has a faster internal storage and a faster USB port for data transfer. But just leaving that aside, I think the performance on the 12 and the 12R is actually very similar. Okay, the second reason is the display. And it's crazy, not because it's a 6.78 inch AMOLED display with 120Hz refresh rate and all, but because it's really efficient. Firstly, it's an LTPO4 display. So it reduces your refresh rate basis your usage and that greatly reduces your battery drain. It's really rare to see that in this price segment. Even the always on display, it can go down to literally one Hertz massive battery saver. Second, while the screen resolution can peak at 2780 by 1264 pixels, this phone gives you the option of slightly dialing it down to further reduce battery drain. And third, on top of all of this, there are plenty features to make it an absolutely gorgeous display. For example, you could turn on image sharpener as well as video color boost for an even better experience. It's also HDR10 plus compatible, so you can stream titles including on Netflix with Dolby Vision support. And it's insanely bright. It can go all the way up to 1600 nits of brightness, hitting its peak at 4500 nits. It's really safe to say it's easily one of the best smartphones for outdoor use under bright sun. Oh, and the other thing is that it will also work if you've got like wet fingers or if you've got raindrops on your screen. I mean, I know it's a very small use case, but when that happens and when that works, feels fantastic. Also, uh, the display is protected using Gorilla Glass Victus 2 and that's a really tough display protection, so it's really good. Now, the third reason is software, and Oxygen OS has been getting some hate over being more and more like Color OS. But having said that, Oxygen OS is still really solid. It comes with a lot of functionalities that you can now customize to be more efficient. For example, you can now swipe up with three fingers to select another app in split screen view and use two apps in parallel quickly. You can also just swipe up on an app and keep it as a floating window or icon so you can call the app out whenever you want without switching through different apps. There's also a very functional edge that helps you quickly go to your files or apps and it's completely customizable so you can place whatever is important for you in that bar. Then you could also just use gestures on the locked screen to launch camera or let's say light up the torch. See, there you go. And all of this without ever unlocking the phone. There's also one-handed use in case you find it difficult to reach the upper portions of your phone. A lot of customization options in terms of color themes. And while there are certain presets that you can use, it could also just extract color palette from your wallpaper. Then you can also apply any third-party icon pack from the Play Store without the need for any third-party launcher, which I think is super cool. I mean, you could even choose what the fingerprint animation should look like. I mean, you can choose from any of these. I mean, it's just a small thing, but shows the level of customization you could go down to. And there's also edge lighting effects that you could customize when you get notifications on your phone. And also, I just love the haptic vibrations on this phone. I mean, it's just very slick and I love it. All right, next. Over the 11R, there are a few design improvements. Let's talk about that. 
So the in-display fingerprint sensor is now, it's more accurately placed. Your thumb can now rest in a more natural position to unlock. Second, they've moved the alert slider to the left edge. And while you may think it's not a big shift, but hold on. When you're gaming, I'm usually tilting my phone to the right and now the alert slider does not come in the way of my left fingers that are resting on the top. I just think it's a big relief to people who, you know, game. But you know, I do have a few minor issues with respect to the design of the phone and we'll talk about that towards the end when we talk about the not so good things about the phone. So hang tight. Reason number five, I love the fact that it comes with everything in the box. You get a 100 watt charger, you get the charging cable, a really nice matching colored protective soft case, and you get a pre-applied screen protector. That is everything guys. You don't have to spend any extra money. You get the box, you slap on stuff, good to go. But that's also true for most other smartphones in this price segment, you know, phones from Oppo, Vivo, Aiku, they all come with everything in the box. I guess Samsung is the only other brand that, and nothing, um, that do not give you, you know, the charger and all the other things. Reason number six, and I know I just talked about the 100 watt charger, but I haven't talked about the battery and the charging. It's amazing. So first of all, really fast charging, you get 100% charge within the first 25 minutes. And you know, it's got a really good, surprisingly good battery life. I mean, I recorded a screen on time of about eight to nine hours, but that was indoors. So you know, I was in Wi-Fi, controlled environment, controlled temperature. If you have like used outside a lot, so you're gonna be using 5G, it might be a little hot outside too, so it might drain a little faster. But even then, I think you'll get about seven to eight hours of screen on time, which is fantastic. Also guys, it's got a 5,500 milliampere hour battery capacity. See, generally, pick any other smartphone in this price segment, you get 5,000 mAh. So this has 10% more average battery capacity. Yet, it only weighs three grams more than, you know, the previous 11R. I think that's incredible. And another cool thing is that even if you're gaming and charging your phone at the same time, it does not get hot. And the last reason, and believe it or not, is the pricing. See, despite having a better set of cameras, better chip, more battery, it still launched for the same price as the 11R did last year. So there's no price increase despite being a better phone. All right, so now all these seven reasons are great reasons why you should pick up the OnePlus 12R. But there are still a few things that I think could have been better. Mind you, none of these things are going to be deal breakers in my opinion, but I understand that some of these things might be very important to a few of you, so here they are. And I wanna pick on the design first. You know, it doesn't look as good and premium. And I know design can be subjective, but the touch has a bit of plastic feel to it, even though it's glass at the back. Also, the blue color is a massive fingerprint magnet too. I guess that's why we get a matte finish soft case in the box. Second, the curved displays, they look good, but they aren't as much easy to use. I mean, generally on curved displays, accidental touches are very common and they are more prone to cracks, you know, if you drop them. I do think that the camera island could have been made smaller and more minimal. And I remember I said the same thing for Vivo X100 Pro and for the OnePlus Open. And this, it's pretty much like that. And lastly, this phone does feel heavier than most other smartphones in this segment. And of course, part of the reason is the fact that it's got 10% more battery capacity than any other smartphone in this price segment. Having said that, it doesn't feel bulky. It's just like heavy. Coming to the next issue, see most phones in this price segment, you know, the Galaxy A series, the Redmi Note 13 series, they offer at least IP67 water and dust resistance. But this one is IP64, which means it can withstand splashes of water. But if you were to drop this, into like a pool or something, it's gone. So I think they should have at least given you IP67 in this. Next, no micro SD card slot. So whatever storage you buy, that's it. That's what you're stuck with. You cannot expand storage. For example, the Galaxy A series just launched and they have a micro SD card slot. So you can expand storage by a thousand gigs, but on this, you can't. I mean, they could have really done that. Next, you cannot shoot in 4K quality from the front facing camera. It just, it's limited to 1080p. And I don't know what it is with OnePlus and Vivo and Oppo and Xiaomi. They just don't allow you to shoot in 4K res. So if you wanna shoot like vlog type content, you can't. Look, otherwise I think the camera is decent. I know I haven't talked about it much, but for this price point, I guess it's decent. You know, low light shots could have definitely been better. I mean, the IQ Neo 9 Pro and even Samsung's A55 have better low light performance than this phone. I also looked at portrait photos. It detects the subjects very well, no doubt, but the focus fall off, it's just too abrupt. 
I mean, it could have been more gradual so that it looks more realistic. Again, I wouldn't say the photos are bad. I'm just saying that it's not amongst the best in this price segment. And so if you're looking for a good camera smartphone in this price segment, you might want to consider other options. But guys, overall, and I'm saying this again, this phone is geared for crazy performance in this price segment and it does not disappoint. I mean, it's really easy for me to recommend this phone to anyone who's willing to spend, you know, $500 or 40,000 rupees. But do get yourself the 256 GB variant if you can, and not because it's got 16 gigs of RAM, uh, but because it's got twice the storage. And uh, because there is no micro SD card slot, you will not be able to expand storage later. And 128 GB, I don't think it's a lot. Especially, I mean, ask iPhone users. I don't feel so good. Now, in this price segment, you can consider the iQOO Neo 9 Pro if you're looking for a more gaming-oriented phone. You could also consider the Galaxy A55 that just launched um, from Samsung. I think they pack one of the best software features in a phone. But frankly, if performance is top of your mind, I really wouldn't recommend any other phone. But the OnePlus 12R. Anyway, that's it guys about the OnePlus 12R. If you guys still have any questions, doubts, comments, concerns, put them in the comment section and I'll definitely help you out. And if you guys did enjoy watching the video, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel guys, it really helps the channel grow. And if you do, uh, press that bell icon and mark all, that'll be of great help. I'll see you guys in the next one.